So for today's lesson, we're going to look at Adobe Animate. Let's begin by launching the program. Going over our Start button, I'm going to click on that and just start typing Adobe Animate or Animate. Now, what is Adobe Animate? It's a program for creating two-dimensional animations. It's very powerful. It has lots of different tools for creating illustrations, but it also has a lot of different animation techniques built into it. So once we get to the opening screen here, we're going to accept the default that we want a high definition, and we're going to go ahead and hit the Create button. OK, so here's our interface. And before I go through it, I personally like to change it from the classic to the animator. Since we're going to be focusing later on on a lot of animations, the animator gives us the best set of work tools in which to deal with in creating animations. So I have my stroke and my fill. I have alignment if I have lots of different objects I want to align. I have my scenes palette. So if I have a long animation with various scenes, I can work with that. Here's my timeline. Properties, and the properties are related directly to these tools here. And we have a library, and we're going to talk about libraries in the next lesson. So looking at the toolbar next, you're going to notice that a lot of these tools are very similar to Adobe Photoshop as well as Illustrator. I have my selection tool, sub-selection tool, I'm actually working with the pen tool to uh, modify or remove points. I have my scale tool to make something larger. I have my pen tool, text, line, various shapes. I have a pencil tool, a brush, a fill bucket, a dropper tool to match one color onto another color of an object, and my eraser tool. That's pretty much what we need to use this program or those basic tools. Let's start with actually just creating a rectangle on here. And when I do take my rectangle, what I can do is I can change the properties here. I, pro I, I typically like to do it in the properties palette. So I'm going to change my stroke to black. I'm going to take my fill to a bright yellow color. And as far as my stroke, I'm going to always put this at three for the demonstrations of purpose of this lesson. And I always want to make sure object drawing mode is turned off. This will cause problems a little bit later on. We don't need this on. So always turn this off. OK, so let's go ahead and create a rectangle. So I've got my rectangle. And this program is kind of a combination of using raster graphics as well as um, uh, vector graphics. So Animate's neat in that I have infinite resolution, but I can actually manipulate parts of the objects bit by bit, dot by dot, so to speak. Here's what I mean. If I take my eraser tool, and you can see my eraser is super small, and I'm going to use the box bracket keys right above the enter to increase the size of my brush. And I can erase just like I could in Photoshop. Now, if I want to zoom in really close up here, I'm going to hold down the control button, and using my middle mouse wheel, I'm going to get really close. You'll notice that you cannot actually see the individual pixels. These are still vectors. And even though I'm chopping this up into small little pieces, if I take my selection tool, you'll notice that they actually select individually. Just like that. Word of caution here, though. If I take an object and put it on top of another object in the same layer, what will happen is if I deselect it and come back to it and move it, it punches out whatever's on the bottom. Something to be aware of. We do have a layers palette, and you will be working with lots of layers eventually. Now, I can also have the ability to bend objects in certain ways. We'll talk a little bit more about that. OK, so using Control on my middle mouse button, I'm just going to scroll out. And using my selection tool, I'm just going to paint a selection over the entire stage and then hit the Delete key. Now, another interesting feature about Adobe Animate is the stroke and the fill. So if I just go ahead and click on just fill, I can actually move it away from the stroke. This is good and sometimes it's bad depending on what you want to do as you're working Adobe Animate. Now again, if I deselect and come back over here, you'll notice that it punches through. That's not always good. So I'm just going Control-Z and putting this back the way it was. 
Now I can also just select the stroke itself. If I want to just select one slide, I'm just going to click on it, it's highlighted, and there you go, I can actually separate it. If I want to select the entire stroke, I'm going to double click, take this, and move this all the way here. Deselect again, and you'll see how it partitions and cuts things off. Now, if I want to actually select my stroke and my fill together, you actually have to double click the filling, and then there you go. Now, another really interesting feature about Adobe Animate is its ability to actually take an object and shape it, sculpt it, or form it very much like a block of clay. So I have my object here, and I'm just going to click on my stage so nothing's selected. Hovering over the actual stroke itself, or the outline, you'll notice that my cursor changes. So now what I can do is I can actually just go ahead and I can just bend this upwards. I can do the same on this side. Now supposedly I'm an animator and I'm showing a ball bouncing and I want to show some squash and stretch. What I can actually do is I can actually capture this position in one frame, this position in another frame, this position in another frame, and so on and so forth. That's why these tools are built into Adobe Animate is because you can manipulate them and show them in a different way, frame by frame by frame, in that they're actually moving. Now taking this object, I can also sculpt it by adding much, much more detail. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key on my keyboard and hover over here. As I hold down Alt and click and drag this, you can see it actually adds another point. Again, one more time, I'm going to hold down the Alt key, click and drag, and now I actually have a little bit more detail to this object. And I can continue grabbing the lines and I can sort of mold this and shape this and sculpt this any way that I want to. I can turn it into a car, I can turn it into a face, I can turn it into lots of different things. Now I'm going to also work with the line tool here and I'm, we're going to use the same process to bend lines to trace over objects. So let's get rid of this. I've already gone ahead and uh, copied uh, an image that I'm just going to go ahead and paste in the center. There it is. Use my scale transformation tool. Let's make this bigger. Okay, great. I'm going to rename this layer. I'm going to call this horse. So let's just do a double click and hit enter. Now I'm going to create another layer over top of this because if I attempt to actually trace over this layer, nothing's going to happen. So come in over here. Let's click on new layer, double click, and we'll call this trace. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and lock this layer so I don't accidentally select it. And you'll notice I have the right layer selected because I can turn on and off the visibility. Ensuring I have the trace layer selected, I'm going to take my line tool, pick a different color, and I'm going to make sure that I'm on a stroke of three. Let's go ahead and zoom in now by holding down control. And we're going to focus on this ear. So just starting right over here, what I plan to do is click and drag all the way across here for the ear. Now, while I have the selection tool, making sure nothing is selected, so if I try, if this is highlighted, and I do this, trying to bend it, it's just going to move it. So i got to deselect it. Again, the selection tool is selected. And I'm going to plan to grab this right here, and I'm just going to bend it just like that. Now, if you remember from before, if I want to add more detail, I'm going to look to my keyboard, find the Alt key, and I'm going to add a point right over here from which to bend it. So I'm going to go Alt and start bending this just like that just to create a bit of a curve. Now, since I have another point here, all I have to do is just grab my pointer and just click downwards to create that kind of curved effect or that trace effect. Let's do the same for the rest of the ear. So taking my line tool, I'm gonna draw a line right about here. Taking my selection tool, let's go ahead and bend this downwards. That's actually a pretty good contour right there. I don't need to add another point or two. Now focusing right over here, we're gonna actually just do this part. So again, taking my line tool, I'm gonna create a line from here to here. And then with the selection tool, nothing selected, I'm just gonna go ahead like that. And I'm gonna do one of these parts, and I'm gonna add a fill to it next. 
So let me go ahead and do that. Let's bend it ever so slightly this way. And finish off one more line right over here. Sorry, I don't like the placement of that line. So let's do it right about like that. And I'm just going to bend it very slightly inwards. Just like that. Now, exploring the fill command, I can also fill parts of this, um, this illustration that I'm actually tracing over. So here's my fill. I'm going to give it a different color than yellow because that's a little bit too bright red for me. And so let's go ahead here and maybe pick. Let's actually grab more of a flesh tone. There we go. And now what I can do is I can click on here. Now, as you're noticing, it's not quite filling. And the reason why is because I have a large gap over here. But what if I go down over here and I try doing a fill here? Nothing's happening. Okay, well, I know what you're thinking. I can just close that gap. So let's go ahead and just pull this right into here. See if that makes a difference. Taking my fill bucket. There, that makes a bit of a difference. What if I wanted to put a line right over here and fill the ear? So let's go ahead and try that now. So I'm going to draw this line and close off that ear. Going back into my fill bucket, still not filling. Okay, well maybe I have a small little gap right over here I need to sort of address. So let's grab this and I'm going to try pulling this in. Using my fill bucket, now it fills. So just be aware of those gaps. Now there are times though, no matter what, if you try to actually go ahead and fill it and you've gone through and you've pulled your lines together and snapped your points together and it doesn't fill, there's another way of remedying that. So going back here, I just want control Z and put it back the way it was and there's a bit of a gap. So I'm still trying to fill and nothing's working. So what I'm gonna actually do is actually play with my fill gap option. In order to do so, I'm gonna actually show some more tools. Now the, gil, the uh, fill gap option is usually located right over here, but it's not. So let me just go ahead and I'm just going to bring this toolbar down so I can see all my tools. There we go. So right over here, you can see gap size. Now I do have a small gap size and I can adjust this. And so what I can do is I can say maybe close medium gaps or large gaps. Let's try small gaps and see if that works. So I got my fill bucket selected. I can close small gaps and let's see if it works. Nope, doesn't work. So let's try going one size bigger. There it is. So if you do have issues in Adobe Animated, trying to fill something that doesn't want to fill, and you tried closing up all your lines together, that still doesn't make a difference, always play with the gap option, and that will make a significant difference and lessen your frustration when working with the program. Now, another neat feature of this program is I can actually take a photograph and with regards to that photograph, I can actually insert it and I can turn it from, say, a bitmap into a vector image. So I'm just going to create a new layer here. Actually, let's start a new file. And I'm going to zoom out so I can see my stage. And let me just grab a picture from the internet. Right click. Let's copy this image. Going back over here, let's go edit paste or control V. There it is. So I have a photograph, and that photograph I want to turn from a bitmap to a vector. Adobe Animate's got some great powerful tools to do so. So what I would do in that case is I'd go modify, bitmap, and I want to trace the bitmap. I can play with these settings, but I'm going to leave them as they are and click on OK. And there it is. It went from a photograph to a graphic, and I can select different parts of them and I could do different things in terms of filling, deleting, so on and so forth. So that's your first lesson, introducing Adobe Animate. Complete the attached activity, have fun with the program, experiment the drawing tools before we actually look at animation in a bit. Thanks for watching.